yes, I told you, the race in Saudi Arabia is going to be bananas. Well, there were actions, but not too much actions. But Red Bulls did not disappoint. They didn't disappoint. Max Verstappen came from 15 to finish second. You know, Alonso predicted before the race that um, possibly by, by lap 25, he will be second. <laughs> and you know the funny thing? By lap 25, 26, 27, he was second. By lap 25, 24, on lap 24, he was right behind Alonso, chasing him down to the gauntlets, chasing him down to the gauntlets. But it was a good race for the Mercedes. They didn't suffer any issues in the race. It was a good race for the Red Bull. It was a good race for the Ferraris, though they know where they will be. But for the Mercedes, they know who they are battling. And those that they are battling are battling them. And that is the Aston Martin. Because they were able to predict they are going to be battling the Aston Martin. Because, like I said, predicting the, the, the Ferrari throughout the practice to qualifying, I said it, they were not hiding anything. They don't get anything to hide. They are, that is just their raw pace. They, they've turned down their engine and they're struggling. But lucky enough, they did well. They came home seventh, which was quite um, illustrious and quite great for them. Well, my name is Oshifa Solo Adam Larry. Welcome to Exxon F1, also known as Formula 1, Colum, Africa. Let's go. So, the race is done and dusted. The race on the Black Sea. That is the fastest track in F1 now. Second longest track on the F1 calendar. And also, that is the only track built close to the dead, the Black Sea. You can imagine the, the wind when it starts is going to disrupt the formation or the setup of the car sometimes. So that did to some cars. But the breakdown, Hamilton started on hard tires. And um, the hard tires really gave him problem eating up. So he got passed by Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, and he struggled to compete with the Alpine in which later he was able to, to drop Gasly, but he was unable to pick up Ocon up until before Ocon pitted. But, like I said, that track has its own, its own issues. There, there has never been a race in, um, in Jeddah. Jeddah track is just three years old. There has never been a race in Jeddah that there has not been a safety car. This year didn't disappoint. I told you yesterday, only Alonso can get Sergio Perez at the beginning of the race. Sergio Perez would only find it difficult, but Alonso did because if you watch the F2 race, the future race, that same thing happened. The second, the, the clean side of the track is much more better than the, the dirty side, in which George Russell also almost got past Sergio Perez, and it would have been a very, a very, very difficult race for him, aside from the safety car. It would have um, not helped their, their strategy. It would not have helped Red Bull's strategy through the day, but they got through that. He was able to hunt down Alonso after some few laps. They were both on, on medium tires, so he was able to hunt him down and passing rather easy and then um, they got the gauntlets down and it was just smooth out amongst the, the the top seven only Lewis Hamilton started on hard tires Leclerc started on soft tires that was brave for Ferrari but he was able to use the soft tires to, to challenge and I think he went on soft tires because of Max Verstappen that's the strategy for them the soft tires are faster tires before Max Verstappen could overtake him they had a good run on the soft tire, which allowed him to overtake Hamilton and some other midfield team. And then for, for Max Verstappen, he went on medium tires, which was also a good strategy for him to stay long out on the track. But the story there is um, that they list him on the track with their budget cap, with everything. But I think if they keep picking up some points this season, they can go seven. They will have some more money. And with James Vowles being their team principal, they will do well this season. And next season, they might be a completely new team next season. The Williams have a very good speed on the street. Like I said, they have a very good speed. They are even faster. I, I believe they are faster than the Aston Martin on the street. But, you know, Williams are still struggling. They might be in the midfield to compete next season like Aston Martin. The story of the day, Mercedes have agreed to change the concept. By race 6, 7, we'll be seeing a totally new Mercedes. They are bringing upgrades every race to change this concept they are having, this design they are having. So they change the design completely. So they said they should be competitive by the 6th to 7th race of the season. And we have 23 races in this season. Okay, wait. Red Bull has won the first two races. Perez, this race. Verstappen, Last race. Hmm. Mercedes. By race six or seven, you'll be competitive. That is, after a whole one third of races, 
you decide to be competitive when others have left you behind. That might still work because if they are so competitive, we know Mercedes, when they are competitive, they can get up on the winning streak and start breaking boundaries. But today, Russell refused to back down for Hamilton. And like I said, Hamilton don't trust that car. And for Hamilton not, not to trust that car, I can see a lot of comments online that Hamilton does not drive while he's driving a bad car. Who wants to drive a bad car in Formula 1? Put Max Verstappen in the, in the Williams. You think he will do well? No! Put Max Verstappen in the Alpha Tauri. You think he will do well? No! So it's not Hamilton. It is, it is Formula 1. You give a good driver a good car. He's going to do well. And he complained. He said, this car is not confident with it, which means Hamilton is making a lot of setup changes in his car because he's not happy with his car. But trust Hamilton when it comes to race day, he comes up, he, he, he gives his best. So we can't blame him. We can't blame him. He, 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 Verstappen pushed Red Bull to where they, they got to. You know, he, he really pushed them. He gave them the heat for Red Bull to be this competitive. He kept on changing the engine. He kept on changing chassis. For about four years, he was pushing his teammates, making sure the cars were designed to his taste. So if you put him in, in a bad car, he would underperform. There was a point in time that Verstappen kept on saying, no, oh, if he was in the same Mercedes that Hamilton is driving, he would do well. Hello, the truth is, if he's in this same Mercedes that Hamilton is driving, he will still be the same. The same. He will be in the same team because he won't be confident in the car and he won't trust the car. So how will, it, how will you deliver when you are in, in a car you don't trust? You know. But it's a good race. It's a good race, and um, there are still lots of loads of things to talk about. So in our next episode, we'll, we'll be giving you much more info on what happened, and we'll be discussing much on Verstappen. Thank you. Watch out for the next video. At Exxon F1, our main aim is to bring you the knowledge of Formula 1, educate you, bring you the, the races, how it goes down, help you to understand it more. On our shots, you'll be seeing some educational analogies and the words that are, that are used during the race that you might not understand. And our long goal is to bring um, a Formula One race to Africa, um, possibly Nigeria, and also to educate people and to help open the knowledge transfer of getting Nigerians into some part of Formula One, the racing, which will take a long time because um, we need to have good cutting category to the to, to to challenge to get drivers from the cutting categories into the f small small formulas the Renault formulas Formula 4 and other formulas because before we can get a driver to Formula 1 that might take a long time but that is our goal to be the bridge to help people realize their dream in Formula 1 some people may, may not even know that that is where they are meant to be but our own main aim is to help them to navigate and realize that goal and also to to help people to to grow in the engineering the other administrative aspect of the game if possibly a billionaire in nigeria who, 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 want, who want to be who want to buy into the to buy a team in formula one or be one of the sponsors so that they can see how they can see that we have the quality hands that will do it which will also help in aiding how our engineering um, develop as a nation. Because um, with um, people, with young people, young, young graduates or young, young entrepreneurs, young engineers learning the engineering of Formula One, the CFD, the fluid dynamics, and all the parts of Formula One, we'll find ourselves growing in car development because the cars you see today, most of the technologies are, are well tested in Formula One before they become today's technology. And um, if you have people there, it, 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 it will help our technical know-how to build good mechanics, good engineers, and um, it, it also promotes the revenue generation for a nation. It's part of our dream to, to, to bring karting, to bring this race to Nigeria and to Africa also, and to help an African, a young Africa, a young African, 
to help a young African to realize his dream, not just in Formula One, but being an engineer and being part of this world. It will also create a lot of em employment for a lot of people, and this will take a lot of people out of the street. That is our main aim. That is why we have this channel. If there's a way you can support, we'd love you to come on board, work with us. I would, I would love to work with you. Thank you.